So to wrap up this information on movement, I want to go back to the same image I showed um, a bit ago. And now you know some more about some of these structures. Um, so we still have the same idea of the premotor cortex is initiating a movement, a conscious movement. Um, information goes to the primary motor cortex, which is going to send signals down that corticospinal pathway to the from the appropriate cortical region to the appropriate location, the spinal segment, then to the appropriate location in the body. So contacting those lower motor neurons, that's the corticospinal pathway. Conscious movement is initiated through that pathway. Um, so that's our start kind of. Um, but then we've got processes that for ongoing movement, we're able to adjust and refine and allow for more precise unconscious refinement. Um, so the cerebellum is one of the main parts for that. Um, so the cerebellum is monitoring balance and equilibrium from the body position, proprioceptors, vestibular nucleus um, provides input to the cerebellum. It then provides input to the primary motor cortex to adjust their activity. So to adjust the activity of the corticospinal pathway, also providing input to the basal nuclei. The basal nuclei are also adjusting movement patterns. Um, so they are influencing the primary motor cortex. So the sensitivity of those cortex neurons. Um, so again, affecting that corticospinal pathway. And the other way the basal nuclei are um, largely affecting movement is through the brainstem nuclei. So that means they're affecting, that the basal nuclei are affecting the medial, medial and lateral pathways, thereby affecting lower, lower motor neurons. So for example, the basal nuclei could um, provide input to the red nucleus, which then is involved in the rubrospinal pathway. So in that way, the basal nuclei are adjusting all of those motor pathways, somatic motor pathways, um, both the corticospinal and the extrapyramidal um, as well. Some of this information is going to be inhibitory, right? So um, it's not always about excitation in movement, but motor neurons themselves, the lower, lower motor neurons cannot be inhibitory. They can only release acetylcholine. So through this processing in the brain, we can then inhibit those lower motor neurons, um, certain muscles, certain times in order to have precise and ongoing dynamic controlled movement.